In this video, I'm going to be talking about a pendulum energy problem, also known as a Tarzan problem sometimes. And it's a person swinging on a rope. We have two different scenarios. We have a person who is running horizontally on a flat surface, grabs on to a rope, and they swing up. And we're going to solve for the maximum height that they can swing up to. And then the second one is a little bit more complicated. Uh, someone hanging from a rope with a particular angle between the rope and the uh, line vertical to the ground and figuring out their maximum velocity at the bottom of their swing. So when analyzing any of these problems, uh, we're mostly looking at um, two different kinds of mechanical energy, kinetic energy, the energy of motion based on how fast they're going, and gravitational potential energy, the amount of energy they have stored up based on their height off of the ground. So for the most part, we're analyzing what's going on with their initial energy and is there any work involved and that will equal our final energy okay in the two cases we have right now um, there is no work which means that there's no energy being added or subtracted to the system all the energy is being cleanly transferred from one type to another so for these two particular questions we're not going to concern ourselves with work we're just going to say that all of the initial energy equals the final energy. Um, but the trick is it just changes into different forms. So you have to kind of analyze the problem conceptually first before you tackle it mathematically. All right. So if I'm taking a look at this problem, I'm going to ask myself um, what happens initially and what happens in the final conditions. And for this first scenario right here, um, the initial part of it is right when this person grabs the rope. Um, they are definitely moving, but they do not have any height off the ground. So if I'm setting up my formula for initial energy is equaling final energy, I know that I'm going to have basically all kinetic energy initially and nothing else. And then when I grab onto the rope and I swing up to my highest point, I'll hit an instantaneous velocity of zero. once it reaches a specific point over here where it reaches its maximum height. So I'll lose all of my kinetic energy and it's going to be transfer, transferred, excuse me, into gravitational potential energy. All right, so that works out pretty nicely. So what I'm going to do is expand my kinetic energy and potential energy into their full formula, plug numbers in, and then solve for my final height. All right, so what I did was I expanded this out into the full kinetic energy formula, one half times mass times V squared. I did know that velocity based on the problem. And four squared is 16, 16 times one half is eight. So I condensed this side down to eight. Um, and actually before I did that, I canceled out the mass because there's an M on both sides. So the mass is actually irrelevant in this problem. And then on the potential energy side, I have MGH. So like I said, I'm already canceled out. The G is always 9.8. And then we have our H for the maximum height that the person travels up to. Okay, so remember that's just a vertical height straight up uh, from the ground level. So then mathematically it works out pretty nicely. All I have to do is divide both sides by 9.8 and I'm done. And my maximum height is 0 0.82 meters. Now for my second problem, it's a lot more complicated because there's not a whole lot of information. Um, you'd have to be given one more piece of information, which a lot of times might be the length of the rope. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a length of 30 meters for that rope in there. And all I really know is that a person is holding onto a 30 meter rope, they're gonna swing down. And as they swing down, we know that their height is going to decrease and their velocity is going to increase. So we know that we're going to be losing gravitational potential energy and that's going to be transformed into kinetic energy. But the question is, 
um, how much velocity specifically are you going to gain at the bottom of the swing. So anytime you're given an angle, um, there's a pretty decent chance you're going to have to use some trig functions and figure out what's going on, but you have to figure out how you're going to use that. So you really have to think about the problem conceptually first. So the person is currently at this height right here. Okay, eventually when they swing down, they're gonna go down to a lower height. And at that point, the rope is gonna be hanging vertically 30 meters. So if I'm thinking about it conceptually, like I said, whatever gravitational potential energy I'm losing is gonna be gained in the form of kinetic energy. So if I just find out how much gravitational potential energy I'm losing, then I know that's the amount of kinetic energy that I gain. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set up the formula in variable form and then see what I need in order to put some values in and solve for this final velocity. So what I'm gonna do is put all the um, variables in and then expand it out and see what I need in order to find this final velocity. All right, so what I did is I know initially I have some gravitational potential energy because I'm uh, a little bit off the ground, um, but at this point I'm not moving, so no kinetic energy. When I swing down, I have a, a certain amount of kinetic energy, which I don't know, and I'm still off the ground um, to some degree. I just don't know how much again, so I have some mg and I'll call that hf. So what I can do is if I'm just taking a look at this left side over here where I, after I subtracted this from both sides, uh, canceled it out on this side and then flipped over to this side, I can factor out the mg And then once I do that, again, the masses are gonna cancel out. So it looks like all I really need is the difference in the two heights from here to here. And then I would be able to solve for my velocity because I know G is always 9.8. So um, anytime you have an angle and part of a triangle, you can always find all the other parts of the triangle using some trig. So it looks like I want this distance right here, which is the adjacent side, and I have the hypotenuse. So it looks like cosine is gonna be the trig function I'm gonna to wanna to use. The cosine of 35 degrees equals, I'll call this distance over here, H. And the cosine of 35 degrees equals h over 30. And then you, do, you um, excuse me, multiply both sides by 30. And then you get this h value. It turns out to be 24.57 meters. Okay, that's actually all the information I need because I know that um, this goes 30 meters down and then this goes 24.57 meters down. So the difference between those is the only number that I need from here to here. So if I subtract these two numbers, 
I get a difference of 5.43 meters. Okay, now that's all I'm concerned about. I just wanted the difference between the two heights. So I can go ahead and say 9.8 times 5.43 meters equals one half times V squared. And if I multiply both sides by two, it's gonna cancel out the one half, bring a two over here. We're gonna finish off by square rooting both sides. So I'm gonna square root the product of two times 9.8 times 5.43. And I get a final velocity of 10.3 meters per second. So I hope that was helpful in helping you set up, understand, and solve a pendulum energy problem. Thank you for watching and listening.